my drills are the battle of self. It's the battle of self, you know, um, you know, the battle your mind on, you know, I got to remember, I'm, the, it, you know, how do you train yourself to hit big shots? How do you train yourself to, to take big shots? You know, so I've learned throughout my career on, you know, putting myself in those situations. Welcome to No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. I'm Mike Botticello. On this side of the couch, it's Gilbert Arenas. But we're, we're not just going to call you Gilbert <laughs> today. You're Coach Arenas. Okay, I'll take that. Do coaches have nicknames? Like Coach Agent Zero? Coach Zero? Could uh, be the first. Mm, coach. Not coach. really. Nah. Zen Master Phil Jackson. Did they call him Zen Master? Yeah. Who did? Not the players. Not the players. Okay. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, coach, coach is like the name. The funny thing, too, is when you have a coach, that's like always your name. Yeah. It's like a doctor. Yeah, yeah. They always like, what's up, coach? Even what if up, you're coach? not coach, yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. that, I don't know if it's supposed to Because the players, coach. you know, when you're growing up, you'd be like, yo, coach Ed, what up, coach? But at, it puts you in that's a category. That's your nickname, Yeah, coach. it's like you can't turn back now. Yeah. It's your, the, the category that you're in now. So what we're going to do today is we're going to pick something up. We did this in the first episode. We teased when we had Sky on that. Lane that you're in now, the focus that you have is to prepare the next wave. Okay. We've been doing that. That's been an ongoing thing in mm -hmm. case people haven't noticed. Um, so what we want to get into today is your method, the method to the madness. Because okay. uh, <laughs> we saw it firsthand and it is no joke. Uh, it's, it's, come on. It's, it's, it ain't that hard. Uh, I mean, <laughs> after a while, sure. But if you were to do day one, no joke. Yeah, no. It only gets worse. I was lying. It, it gets worse. Okay. It, it gets worse. So, so to pick that back up, when we started, you said you're going to go out on this quest, so to speak. So let everybody know the purpose and what you're doing now. Um, it basically, as far as in terms of like the strategy, the approach, and what you want these kids to to tap into. You know, um, just like anything, everybody wants to be great. Everybody wants to get to the next level of something. You know, everyone wants to be a pro. Everyone wants to be a, um, a star, the, the goat. <laughs> but they don't know how or they're not willing to put in the work. Um, and the kids who do want to achieve that, they have no guidance. You know, so since I've been around, you know, I was self-motivated. Um, self-trained. Um, and then, you know, once I got older and realized I was handicapped, you know, you know, to, you know, getting better, I had to watch others, you know, watch other greats and then realize how to work out, you know, the efficient way, the, the, the tiger way. You know, if you're trying to be a tiger, you have to train like one. You know, you you can't you can't, you can't want to be a tiger, but you're lazy and you, you and you're just walking around. You know, you know, like a lamb. That's not how that works. You know, so you have to train mad to be, you know, mad. Uh, but what do you mean by handicap? Handicap, like um, I only know so much. You know, um, you're you're handicapped to what you know. You know, it's just like uh, history. Mm. You know, your conversation with someone. Has a has a ceiling because of the information you process. Um, I remember I was, you know, in a debate, and you know, when you're debating, you know, you're supposed to be like going back and forth. And there was a point where it was like, hey, um, the information you're talking about, I have no idea about. My <laughs> my bank doesn't go that far. You know, same thing in sports. Is you get to a certain stage. You're handicapped, you know, just like um, trainers, right? If your furthest goal, I mean, the furthest place you went was, you know, third team, you know, CIF all high school, and you're a trainer, the information you're processing is handicapped there. You, you can't 
you really can't give information about college overseas in the next level. You just can't. So you're going to have to do your own research and get updated. You know, so that's why I'm saying that when I was in the NBA and I'm training, well, I've never been in the NBA, so I don't know how to train like an NBA player. I know how to train like a college player. So now I need to, I need to update my resume so I can train like an NBA player. And with that in mind, it's also generational too. Think of the era that you came up with versus these kids now have so much information mm-hmm. where it's almost like it's easy because they can go watch a video, go out and do that and kind of get more answers where you had to just go out. And that those days you might've had a VHS tape. You mm-hmm. definitely didn't have a smartphone and you just have to go imagine it. And it was just, I, I don't know. I didn't have a trainer. I didn't mm-hmm. have, it was just me and a ball. Mm-hmm. And it was very simple. That's the way it was for a long time. But now these kids, they have more resources. Mm-hmm. They have more resources, but where's, where's the resource coming from? It's coming from a phone. It's coming from a highlight. It's, so technically, it's the same. We have VHS highlight tapes, all NBA Slam Jam. You know, we, that, it's highlights. It's, it's just moments, five-second moments of moves that happen once a blue moon. You know what I mean? So it's not like, you know, like most of us can't recreate that. You know, I remember the Kenny Anderson on Bobby Hurley move. Boom, 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 boom. I... Practice that move hours on hours and never did it once because the person didn't do exactly what Bobby Hurley did with the arms and you know what I mean? So that's exactly what's going on now. Same thing that they have a bunch of moves on highlight. I mean, from, you know, Instagram and social media and they're training that way. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, they're training for the moment of that. And you also what you're seeing is a highlight which isn't exactly breaking it down. You got to be really, especially back then, really smart to say like, okay, if I watched in the 90s, I don't know if it was a Grant Hill, mm-hmm. has he in a low cross? And you see Grant Hill like, oh, cool. He just did this move and dunked it. I want to do that. Because that's mm-hmm. what you did. Because mm-hmm. it was like, I'm a fan of this. It looks cool. But then if you really break that down, is like he shifted his weight onto his right leg and how low he snapped the cross based on being 6'8", all those and, things. And that matters on the move he did before. Because I'm pretty, like, you got to think about it. I, he didn't do the same crossover the whole game or they would have picked that apart. So he had to do something to play before that set up for that move and that move set up for another move following that. You know, so there's, you know, there's, there's different levels of, of the game. You know, it's the game within the game. You got to watch it first. Mm-hmm. And then you got to examine really what's happening. It's When you watch a game, you can get lost just following the ball mm-hmm. and you really see the end result. What you're not watching is how a guy moves off the ball, a down screen he's going to get to get mm-hmm. open. Those The, the strategy mm-hmm. that you're saying. Okay. So that's where it starts. And then to transition that to the work that you have to put in. For you, we know your signature style is going to be to push limits. Mm-hmm. So now let's say this. I have you're, you have a pupil, okay? You're the master. Mm-hmm. You're the Yoda. Mm-hmm. You're Yoda now. Yoda. <laughs> uh huh. So then, so then, how do you put them to work? Um. Well, I have you know just like anything. I have my shooting drills. I have my conditioning drills. Um, shooting and conditioning drills, um, which that I've documented throughout my career from what worked in high school to college to the NBA to being retired and watching, you know, others do stuff and then say, oh, that'll work. Oh, I can add that with that. That'd be better. You know, so like, um, like, like moves. I take your moves that someone you're, someone's teaching you moves and I put it in a drill that I know that's how it's going to be used. Where are you going to be using that? Like, you know, like I said, um, I remember I was watching the trainer and they, they were starting at half court and then they're doing all these cone drills, blah, 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 blah. And then when they got to the three-point line, you know, they're shaking and boom, right? And I'm like, ooh, that's pointless. And the pointless part was from the half court to the three-point line, for the most part, you're not being guarded. So all these moves you're doing is irrelevant. It's 
they would never be guarded like this. They're, no, no one's going to be guarding whether they're going to be in a fast break or someone's going to be sitting back there waiting for them. So it's basically a straight dribble of nothing. So you're sitting here and they're learning all these moves and they're getting comfortable with the idea in this space. When reality, this space is, is, is no man's land. This is a no man's land space. You're not going to be sitting there doing, you know, 26 moves before you get to the three-point line. That's, so don't even, don't even waste that kid's, you know, retaining information. Pro- don't, don't waste it here. You can, that should be erased out of their brain because it's never, they're sitting there doing sham gods at the three, like, at the hem, it's not, that is not the area where that's going to actually happen. Right, so what they need to first, I mean, the skill set, cool, you got to teach that. But what they really need to know is situations and scenarios mm-hmm. for game use. Yes. So that's where you're at. Um, and like we said, it was methods to the madness, but your tactic is from extreme training. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to buy in, you got to be bought all the way in. And kind of what you said is unlimited time. Like you're going to work whenever you're ready for it. Every day, day in and day out, mm-hmm. you know, rain or shine, morning, noon, and night. Yeah, I mean, you're, there's no different than anything. You have to push yourself over and over and over and over and over. And that's just, that's just the way it, it, it works. You know, lazy, being lazy. Um, Waking up saying, I don't feel like doing it today. I mean, your talent might get you, but it's it, your talent, just being naturally talented and gifted is going to get you to, it's going it, to, some players are going to get to the NBA just because they're just gifted. But you're never going to be elite. You, you have to have a mindset and a, and a work ethic for it. But, it, so it can be two ways, really. You have the work ethic, the greatest work ethic in the world. Maybe you don't have all the physical attributes. Mm-hmm that can get you so far. You can have all the physical skill and just natural ability, but if you don't have that battery in your back, you only get, it's really that blending of those two. Yeah, but I'd rather have work ethic and no skill mm-hmm. than have all the skill and no work ethic. Yeah, 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 because you and, can add. add you know, you know, I mean, with, when, when, if you have the motor and the mindset to be great, no matter what you do in life, you're going to always give yourself a chance to be successful just because when you get into it, you're going 110%. Self-motivated. Mm-hmm. But with a coach, kids self-motivated, you can work with that. Or just to, especially when they're younger, to show them what they need to motivate for. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's not like, hey, you can, you're going to be in the gym from 4 to 6 p.m. It doesn't end there. You know, it's all day. It's after, mm-hmm. you know, knowing like, yeah. really, I think that's the greatest thing to show a kid is like, it's on you. You can do this whenever you want. Mm-hmm. And like you said, if it's a, whatever your craft is, if you play guitar or something, you know, it's, the more time you put into it, the better you're going to become. Yeah, exactly. It sounds simple, but it sounds. I mean, it sounds simple because it is simple if that's what you want to do. You know, if it, it, it's everything is simple if you make time for what you're willing to 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 be great at. That's all well and good, but now as a coach, how do you get your point across? You know, that's the difference between me and whoever. My job isn't to get my point across. My job is to lay out the road to success. Either you can take it or you don't. It's that simple. Like, I've been there. This is the road I went. You know, I made some bumps. I'm going to clear those bumps for you. And I can give you a straight line. As straight as it can possibly get because I've I've been there. You know, um, so you need to... Let's go, or you don't. You know, and that's but that's on you. You know, all I can do is just present it and you know put you put you through the test. And it's up to it's up to you to 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 buy in or not. You know, I'm not gonna force you. I'm not gonna. You you can't want it more than the people you're training, or want it more than you know. Um, you know, if your father want it more than your kids, you know they gotta want it more than. <laughs> then you're giving them. We're on the field with you. Uh-huh. The conditioning part. All right. Normally, I don't know. What's a normal conditioning routine look like? You run a mile or two, three. Uh, suicide sprints. Yeah. Weight, weight sessions. You mm-hmm. know, that's all good. Um, you know, that'll get you right. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not for you, though. No. Um, 
I've never been about, um, you know, because I played football, ran track, played basketball. Everyone has their own ways of conditioning. And I just blend, I just blend everybody, just blend it all together. Um, You know, so when I'm on a track, it's just like anything. You know, if you're a point guard, why would you be running sprints without the ball in your hand? Makes mm-hmm. no sense. Like, you know, um, if you're, if you're, you know, if you're Clay Thompson, you're a shooting guard. Yeah, you know, get out on the open and take off. Yeah, but for the most part, you're gonna be dribbling with the ball full speed. So, you know, that's how I usually use my track workouts. You know, um, some days it'd be you dribble the 100 and then um, the curves. You have to do moves, sprint. Move, sprint, moves. Which is what we had on the track with the kids. So no, get- yeah, that one I just had without the ball, sprint, and then give them cone drill moves on the what's the name. But sometimes I make it hard when they try to, they got to dribble their sprint. Um, so you guys seen probably love, it was basic one, mm-hmm. you know, where you run, you got to run full, and then once you get to the curve, you work on your, you know, your ball handling on the curve. But to understand that, to explain to people, you could go on the track and kids just run laps mm-hmm. and they get the distance in, they get the cardio in, good, that's done. Then they could go in the gym, you put cones down and they go through that. Mm-hmm. Cool. Blending them together does what and does what better? I just think it helps, you know, um, you know, getting out on a break, you know, so I treat everything like you're in moments of a game. So you're getting out. Once you get there, you got to work on your your move while being tired. So you got to perfect your move while being tired because this last three minutes of the fourth quarter, maybe you are guarding John Wall and somebody and they're sitting there going like this the whole time and you, you're going to need to understand how to compose yourself while being tired to put the ball down, to sprint again. You know, um, so those are the ways I condition myself for basketball. Um, you know, just... You, you can run five miles a day and then get on a basketball court and make two change of directions and you're out of it. You know, so I just, I just put it all together as one. And what do you think about this? That your conditioning, first of all, is your baseline. If you have good, good endurance in a game, you could, that, that's an ultimate weapon. If you're stronger in the fourth quarter, where other guys are fading off, mm-hmm. I mean, that's, you can dominate. Condition is, condition is the most important part to just anything. You know, um, being the last person to get tired and fatigued. You know, making the fourth quarter feel like the first quarter. You know, and that is the purpose of always being in primal shape. Now, okay, for you, though, there's, there's the, you, you could say, like, oh, let's, let's run two miles, three miles, maybe five. You don't really stop there, though, huh? Um, like, you know, on a, um, on, on a track workout where I do the sprint, um, was a sprint, dribble, sprint, dribble, that'd be 20 laps. Mm-hmm. We'll do 20, we'll do 20 laps of those. That's, um, that's so that's usually, that's usually our Sunday routine, you know, Sunday, Sundays, if I'm working throughout the week, Sundays is just a, con- just pure conditioning. So that'd be, you know, we'll do 20 laps of those. So yeah, 60-40 came from uh, a retired player um, by the name of Kendall Gill. Mm-hmm. Um, he has this uh, 60-40 club where on the football field, you run 60 yards, jog 40, turn around in the end zone, sprint 60 yards, jog 40, and then do your, um, I guess he has a couple uh, um, stations. Like drills, like, you know, they do jumping jacks or lunges and, you know, so I, you know, so I got that from, from him, um, where I thought it was, it'd be great. So, um, we did a 60, 40 drill and I'll have four stations. We, so we had a uh, squat, burpee squats, burpee squats. We had a uh, ab roller. Uh-huh. We had, um, 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 power dribble, the power dribble on a, a heavy ball with you pushing on them. Mm-hmm. And then the other yeah, one. Pat Beverly. <laughs> you got to work out for Pat Beverly. But even what that is, that, that shows you it, it's strength with the ball, mm-hmm. which is important thing. I can but, dribble all here, but I've ever never yeah, get bumped yeah. or contact. Yeah, remember, if the game, ref, you got to think about it. The ref, if the, if, hey, the ref ain't going to always call it. You got to be able to concentrate and keep it. So you got those four 
with 60 40. Mm-hmm. Well, one day, um, so the max I would do will be 96, which is six miles. Um, you know, so it, it evens out to six miles. So what ended up happening is it was their fault, in a sense. They had the choice. It was, I had, it was seven kids and I had seven s- slots. And I wrote 96 on two slots. I wrote uh, no run, just go to breakfast. And then I had one that had five and one that had three or two that had three. So they picked their own, they picked their own death. That's basically what it was. They picked their own death. I said, hey, as a group, you guys figure out which numbers you're going to pick. And then from there, it just became, I just outsmarted them. You know, start saying, the, you know, I can hear them say numbers and stuff like that. And then, you know, I'll throw in my chime and then, and I got them to pick but 96. But meanwhile, are you testing who really has that dog mentality and wants to be pushed, and wants to be challenged? No, don't need to. Because the way the drills are, because it's more competition, the pack leader will challenge you. You know, whoever whoever's the the alpha, and you know you, you at, at, when you got ninety six going, you don't want to be the last one mm-hmm. because the last one you might be doing that fifteen times by yourself, which means you're by yourself. You're on an island. Everyone's watching because that's how lazy you were that 15 of them are by yourself when everybody was going extra hard. So my thing is, hey, go hard and get it over with. Even if it takes three and a half hours. <laughs> so let's let's transition from that foundation with conditioning to actual on the court. We're gonna call this assassin development because mm-hmm. really that's what, you're not just making ball players, you're making killers out there. And and it's not just like you want these kids to, you know, do like you said, Yoda, do some like Luke Skywalker stuff. <laughs> but it's just like everything that they're doing is putting them in game situations mm-hmm. uh, and scenarios to where they're going to have to be effective with the ball yes. and be scored, score mm-hmm. first. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I think the, the purpose there is, well, the purpose is what? To be successful. That's the purpose. Um, so I need to hear that from you. I could have easily identified. <laughs> be that successful. Way. Like I mean, that's the whole. That's the whole goal of it. So, you know, you you your training method has to back that. You know, um, like uh, like the warm up. You know, um, they have the uh, the climber. They got to go four hundred feet, and then from there, it's you know stations four hundred four hundred uh, yards on a bike. 400 feet here, a sprint of uh, 400, and then they had to run right on the court and do layups. That's the first round. So they're sitting there, you know, going like this. Second round, those those up and backs, that becomes jumpers. While tired, then it becomes threes. And then now that's the warm up. Now let's get into some basketball. You know, instead of saying, all right, we're going to do our conditioning and lifting in here, and then we're going to get on the court. No, I'm going to add it all. You know, we're going to warm up just like this. You know, so I'll do that. And then once we get on the court, to me, it's about, like, moving and and just in, in getting shots up. You know, I think sometimes we forget that um, the goal is to get to, to become better shooters. The only way you can become a better shooter or a better scorer is to actually do it at high volumes. You know, so when you hear somebody say, "Are right, we going to do three to five makes?" Three to five makes, and then you move on to another drill. Like I didn't even get to understand three to five. I didn't get to really understand how to really do that move, and we already moved on to something else. And then we moved on to something else and moved on to something else. So, yeah, we got 200 shots up, but I didn't really get anything. I didn't, you know. I'm, There's I'm, no muscle memory. I'm still, yeah, I'm still, yeah, I'm still, I'm still an F in all of these spots in, you know, in a sense. Because I never really mastered anything. I didn't master the step back from the corner. I didn't, you know, I didn't get my shimmy right. You know, they didn't get to correct me on my shimmy. You know, so I'm still doing the same bullshit shimmy I was doing before. You know, but yeah, I made three shots, but you know, what happens when that defense comes and you're in that situation in that corner? You didn't you didn't perfect it. When you bring together conditioning and skill work, where times where you're focused on your conditioning, you're you're thinking about just being tired. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you're focusing on your skill work, you're just focusing on the skill. You bring those two together, 
you might not notice like you're getting shots up while running. And so the purpose of that is to get shots up while you're tired. Not yeah. Like that um, in a game. I mean, that's what I said. It's like you have to try to mimic the game. And, you know, if you look at Steph Curry, he moves without the ball so much. Like what type of conditioning do you think he's in? He's in top condition. Only way you, the only way you can get that type of condition is to do your drills over and over and over and over and over in that same atmosphere. You know, so that's how my drills are stationed. It's more conditioning type of drills that you're going to get tired. Because you got to remember, you have to shoot while you're tired. You have to focus. It's, it's, more, it's more about being mentally tough. Um... You know, if I say, all right, this spot, we're going to do the U drill where it's, you know, baseline, pull up, back to baseline, and then run under, baseline, pull up shot, then back to baseline, run up. You got you to gotta go, you got to do 50 of them. You know, you, you probably had done it three times and, and somebody screams out six. Your mind goes into the negative knowing that you got 44 more. But that's the purpose. I want you to think about it. Because now, for you to get the drill over, you have to concentrate more on not missing. So now, now, now you're in tuned. Because you got to remember, every shot now counts. If not, that's just more running for you. You know, and, 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 and that's the purpose. It, 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 it makes you hyper-focus. Because you got to remember, it's not going to stop until you get 50 makes. So you're really concentrating on, you're really now focused on making versus just focus on shooting. You know, there's, 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 there's shooters, which is cool, or there's shot makers. You know, I, I, don't, I don't care for shooters because anybody can be a shooter. Shooter is just get a ball and just chuck. That's just, well, shot maker. Are you a shot maker? Do you make shots? Do you make shots when they count? You know, that's important. Like I can take a shooter, and then put him through my drills and then you're like, oh, he's not really that good. Because how he becomes a shooter, he's not probably developed for everybody. So I can find your flaw. Like, okay, he's a very good spot up shooter, horrible on the move. Or he's an amazing coming off the screen, horrible spot up shooter, horrible back step shooter, horrible down. Like you can find just, all I do is just put him through the drills and then I can see where his flaws coming at and then that's where you clean it up at. Who's an example of that? Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce is a shot maker. Basically, could do it everything. Yeah, I mean, but you know, you know, Paul Pierce, Steph's a shot maker, Dame's a shot maker, Kyrie's a shot maker. Right, but I'm saying, like, if you look at the eyeball test on Paul Pierce, was like he wasn't the smoothest athlete, wasn't the cleanest guy. Give the, him the ball. I want a shot made. I remember like those Celtics teams. That was who was getting it. You knew it. He would call a shot, make it. Now, see, my thing is, shot maker is a a term that no one used because they called it shooting. Like, so they would say, oh yeah, Steph Curry's a shooter. No, he's a shot maker. Mm -hmm. Shooting, being a shooter is just go up there and just take shots. That's shooting. But Kyle Corver. But do you make shots? Kyle, is this Kyle Corver. Shot, 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 shooter or shot maker? Shot maker. Mm -hmm. A shooter means nothing. But is he gonna go one on one? What I'm saying is a shooter means nothing. A shooter means I can give you the ball and say take 100, and you shot 100 shots. That don't mean you're actually making them. Right. You know what I mean? So it was like a little sly diss against. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, he's a shooter, but does he make the actual shot? Like, I don't know. Does he make shots, though? Like, you know, you can. But to bring it back to that you drill is the point is like, I want you to get to 50. And if you are locked in and you can handle bad passes, distraction, you know, getting tired, but you just know I'm going to get this thing done. I'm going to make my 50. Yeah my, yeah, my drills are the battle of self. It's the battle of self, you know, um, you know, the battle your mind on, you know, I got to remember I'm. It, you know, how do you train yourself to hit big shots? How do you train yourself to, to take big shots? You know, so I've learned throughout my career on, you know, putting myself in those situations. 
in practice, making it harder. So when the, when I when I when when the, the the situation come in game form, that's easy. One, I'm not tired. I'm not huffing and puffing trying to make this shot. We just had a timeout, had two drinks of Gatorade, fresh. Ah, what's happening? Whoop! You know, it's easy. You know, well, the way I trained, there was no Gatorade break. There was no timeout because I had to make 100. I had to make 50 straight. So by the time I got to that last one, I'm exhausted. You so know? the game is easy. Yeah, the game becomes easy. So my training is harder than a game atmosphere. So when you get in the game, it's, a, it's technically a cakewalk. From a physical standpoint. How about from a mental standpoint? That's what my, my it's, it's mental. I'm, I'm mental battling you. And it's not mental to where it's like, are you going to uh, fade off because you're tired or whatever and you're afraid of stepping up? It's more of like, how do I handle this situation? Back it's all to, of it. Yeah, that, that's what we started with was it's watching the film and understanding the scenarios. So mm -hmm. when I get myself in that situation, I'm But it's all of it. It's, it's it. all of it. Either you're going to fade and get destroyed by yourself or you're going to overcome yourself, even though there's other people with you. It's, it's still about you because it's, it's, it's your 50 shots that you got to make. Everyone has to make their 50. So I don't do I don't do that 15 bullshit as a group. No, 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 no. Because this kid made eight. This kid made four. This kid made and you made none. But you still get you. You you're still sitting there pumped because no one. No, you don't. There's no hiding. You don't hide. Everyone makes their 50 before we can move on. And that's, that's just how it is. Like, you came here to get shot, to make shots, and that's what we're going to do. We're not going to do no group setting shots and no, 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 no. You go. You got to do your 50. If it takes you 25 minutes, it takes you 25 minutes. We, we, we got hours here. What's happening? You know. And with that in mind, you got to say it's a bottom line business. Like the result, the proof's in the results. The work that you do, you're going to see results mm -hmm. by either how much you're committed to it, by the time that you put in, um, the unseen hours. Just you, just keep going. I mean, if you if you're putting if if you're doing the work, the reward is gonna is gonna be there. You know, it's the the doubt comes from you wasn't prepared. That's where doubt comes from. Doubt comes from you really didn't prepare, just like a test. Mm -hmm. If you really didn't study. You studied, but not, you didn't you study didn't your really ass off. You didn't really study your ass off. So when you go into the test questioning, mm -hmm. like, ah, and I lost my pen. If you might have got like if a you, Yeah, if you studied, you, you're you, just, you're you just up, yeah, done, you, first yeah, done, done, done I'm out of here. This shit was tasted. easy, yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's putting the work in. And, you know, from trainers to coaches, some just don't know how, you know, to to really train and really get these kids, like, peaking. So how do you do that? Yeah, I got to show you. Okay. Well, the thing, the other thing <laughs> I notice about what you do is always establishing the element of competition. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we're just going to go through this drill. There, Like, if you have a group or if you have one kid, there's one thing that you're going to work towards. There's a carrot. So there's... The yeah, I'm, I, I, I play off a reward system. It's a reward system. So if we go in a gym and let's say we're playing um, ones, you know, whoever wins, his reward is he gets free shots. So what ends up happening is we're playing ones. Who He's the winner. You guys do 25 push-ups. And then... You rebound for him. He gets his spot shots or whatever, however he wants to step back. Whatever he wants to do with his shots, once he's done, next spot. Let's go. And if one of the losers take a shot, five more push-ups. You're not allowed to shoot. Only way you get shots is if you win. And then when it's all over with, everyone get the fuck off the court. <laughs> the only person who can stay on the court is winners. Winners can stay after. Losers, no, off the court. You don't get special, you know, off. You didn't win. You didn't do nothing to win. You didn't compete enough to win. You know, so you don't get rewarded of shooting after. No, that's, hmm, no, that's too easy. 
You sit here and let this man beat all on you, and then you think you can sit here and, I'm going to take 500 shots today. No, nah, that's a reward. That's a reward. Oh, I get the, f- the court. Nah. But that, that totem pole, right? So the low man is going to have to do the, the stuff the, that nobody wants to do. The guy on top still has to work, but something that's hey, listen, a lot more fun and hey. it's better. But the guy on the bottom is going to want and they want to move up. Guy on top, you don't want to stay there. Yeah, but that's, that's what makes it happen because the guy at top, he knows the only way he gets to keep working on his shot is if he keeps winning. The bottom guy... Will be get he will get so upset that he doesn't get to get those shots that he's gonna fight harder. And then with me, I don't care about age. I don't care if you're 13 or 17. In the NBA, 35 or 22, that shit don't matter. You know what I mean? If you step on the court, you compete. One drill that I uh, you guys caught was my um. My one-on-one full court mm-hmm. drill, you know, um, it came from Michael Jordan. Well, the drill didn't come from Michael Jordan. The, the thought came from Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. where everybody wanted to be that guy who, five, four, three, you know, you wanted to be the guy who, who hit those shots. And then one day I was sitting, I was like, how do you train for that moment? How do you train for five, four, three, two, one? So I came up with a drill where that's what it's called. Five, four, three, two, one, where you're playing full court one-on-one and every time the ball changes direction, it's five, four, three, two, one. So, and then with mine, well, in, in full court, it would be seven seconds. It would be seven seconds on a full court with no three-pointers. So you're not allowed to shoot a three. So you can't just go from three-point line to three-point line. And just chuck it. And just chuck it. You know, so you have to really like play basketball. So basically, you know, and then it's, the time limit is five minutes. So you have a five minute go at it. So it's the last five minutes of the game and you're sitting here just going back and forth. So what ends up happening is, even though it's five, four, three, two, one, and you're speeding up, when it gets to two, one, you have to understand how to position yourself to, to get space, to slow down, to focus on that shot. So now I'm, I'm giving them five straight minutes on learning how to hit three, two, one, which no one does because no one ever thought mm-hmm. about it. But I had to, and that's what made me great in those moments because I'm sitting here doing this tired three, like, and then, you know, when I'm getting in the game, I've been three, two, one. I've, I've done, did this hours of my life and put myself in this situation so many times that this you're <laughs> you're 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 non you're a non-factor. Like I'm not tired. I can see clear. It's easy. Three, two is on his back foot. One got it off. And you're not afraid of the clock because you're. I'm not, I'm not afraid of the clock because I didn't I didn't heard it so many times that once. Once, you know, like, you got to remember when you first started, it's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, everybody's rushing, throwing it up, you know, trying to get it off. And then you'll understand it's, it's, it's I, a little longer than... I was watching a game the other night, a college game, and uh, three seconds left on the clock. I think it was Carolina-Miami, and three seconds left on the clock. So Carolina hit a shot, and the Miami inbounded. Three seconds left, they threw it to the kid, and he just chucked it up three-quarters court. Yeah, it was two three seconds. 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 He yeah. He could have. T- I mean, maybe it was still probably would have been a three in a quick shot. But if he had just known how to work within those seconds. And that's what the drill is about. Understanding your time. Because you get to hear me over and over. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three. And you start process understanding it. And you start understanding the rhythm. And then, you know, eventually four or five times you done did this. Every time you go down there, you're actually getting great shots. So I can watch someone and say, all right, I will put the ball in his hand during those moments. I can, you know, I can watch kids do that drill and say, all right, he'll be my first option on no shots. He'll be my second option. He's not as fast, but he, he knows how to actually get his shot off. You know, so you can, I can sit there and, and pick who does well in those moments. Yeah, he might be my star player, but in those moments, he's not very efficient. 
he's the guy. You know, you can really, you can really find out who's who in, in, in some of my drills. And, and that will help too, because now you know who your gamer is, who your game winning guy is, and who your best player is. And it might not be the all it might not be the same person. Mm-hmm. All right. So one of your your trademark things coming up was that you had a black book. And in, 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 in those days, we talked about technology. You had a notebook. You wrote down your notes in your notebook. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, you might have a phone. But the point is, as you go every day, you're taking notes, you're making observations, and you're cataloging. Mm-hmm. And then as a player, you're adding those parts of the catalog to your bag, to your game. So let's do this for fans, followers, young, young kids, mm-hmm. whatever level you're at. Break out the notebook. Let's do this. Take, take a minute. Uh, run. Get a pad and paper. Let's start this. What are you putting in those notebooks? Not just the moves, but what are you focusing on? Give me the categories. Okay, first of all, it was moves. <laughs> That's one category, was, moves. You gotta remember, it was moves. So what I did, so, so we, we're clear here, from game one to game 82 plus playoffs, when we're playing against opponents, right, I'm trying, you gotta remember, since we didn't see, we didn't have social media, so I don't get to see a move Curry did, so I only can catch it if it went on Sports Center or what's the name. So if we're in a game and he does a move, and I like it, I will point at you know uh, the trainer, time, so I can go back and look at it and see what it was. If I like, add it to my my list. Same thing with you know Jamal Crawford when he was doing a you know, full speed bounce behind his back and then hop back over. Mm-hmm. Call it Jamal Crawford. Got a move coming down, pop, pop. You know, before that came, boom, boom, that's a Steve Blake. Then you had to drive hard baseline, pull back under, the Dwayne Wade. You know, here you got the Luka. You know, got the ball, hit bounce hard, switch, go. You know, I got, that's the Luka, Luka, the Luka T. You know, so I, I jot all these moves, and then from there, I put them inside my blanket drills. See, so I already have drills, and then I use and see what moves goes where and what moves can go. You know, so I have the, the drills that I already have, and then I just add the moves to those drills. So that's really how it works. So it's cat- And then if I need new drills, like, so the U drill came from um, John Lucas. You know, uh, he put me through it, and, you know, uh, it was May 12 shots. And he was telling his, um, his, his, uh, his group of kids, he was like, yeah, you want to see what a real shooter looks like, he hasn't touched the ball. I'm pretty sure he hasn't shot in a minute. I'm going to put him through this drill, and he's still going to do better than you guys. Right? He said, watch. I just, I just know. <laughs> and, that's what, and then he told me how to do the drill. I'm like, all right. Put me through it. I went, uh, I, I made 12 out of 13. What was the difference? You know, it's, it's watching. It's watching, learning, understanding, getting drills. Like, like drills. When I mean drills, I mean, you know, most of these kids now, they don't even know how to come off baseline screens. Uh, they don't know how to back cut. They don't know how to, you know, um, when somebody's driving to them, they don't know how to read the defense. You know, so I use I use drills to, to create those same, so when it happens, they know what to do. Yeah, and, and that's what it comes down to. And that's all this is, is when you, when you're Committed to something, when you're dedicated to something, you'll get the best results when you use the time effectively. Yeah. Like, I remember getting a text while we were filming. It was, what, 11, almost midnight. Mm-hmm. And we get a text, y'all got to leave the gym. Y'all got to leave the gym because he has school in the morning. Yeah, a loser would say something like that. <laughs> <laughs> someone That's who didn't parent. someone who yeah. didn't make it will say something like that. That is like no, like like if you can hoot with the owls at night, as long as you can soar with the eagles in the morning, I don't care. You know, so if you know, like I, t- I tell my son, he he's he he'll sit out on the shooting machine three, four in the morning. And he hasn't went to sleep. But when I knock on the door and it's time for school, if he's up and ready. You're never going to hear a complaint from me because mm-hmm. he's figured out how to manage his time. You know, so it ain't about go to sleep early. Like if he's if he's doing, I look at it like this. He's he's not up playing video games because he doesn't want to be a gamer. 
he's up getting shots up. A thousand, two thousand. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop that and say, all right, man, time to go to bed. You got school in the morning. Hey, listen, you know school starts at seven. I know, I know, I'll be ready. Okay. When that starts, when when those shots start affecting him getting up, then this hey, you're not, you're not, you can't do it both. You don't know how. You don't, you know. When you learn how to do it all, you learn how to manage it. You know, just just like James, James Harden. Hey, he goes out there, scores 50, 60. Instead of going to eat, instead of going to bed, he's sitting in the arena till 3, 4 in the morning, still getting shots up and working out, and still got to be back to, back to work at 11. You find a way. When you, when you want to be successful, you find a way. So when I remember, I was looking at the text like, mm, yeah, they, didn't, they never made it in life. There you go. He raced. <laughs> they weren't a hooper. <laughs> they, they wasn't a real. They wasn't a real hooper. But but there it is. That's the the parting words of wisdom is to find a way. Find a way. You know. Um, you know if it's you know waking up six five in the morning. You know. You know getting a mile in or you know dribbling up and down the street. You know doing your sit ups. Work. I mean, there's you have so much time. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 our brain gives us the excuse like we don't have time. We have so much time. You know, before school, you know, depending on when you wake up, you have time to, to work on something. You know, from period to period, you got time. It was a three, what, what is that, what is that, three minutes? I don't know, what the five minutes? In five minutes, yeah. five minutes of class, you can work on, you can work on your moves. You might look stupid, but hey, what happens when the game day starts? Mm -hmm. Those same people who's laughing at you are buying tickets because you done you you, you, you the man now, you mm -hmm. know. So it's 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 managing it's man it's just managing your time for what's what's important. There it is. Let time be your teammate, not your enemy. Yeah. All right. Well, more to come on this one. Plenty of wisdom, but we can only do it in one session. Yeah. Can't give you all my secrets in one session. No. You know. Don't give it all away. I won't be. I wouldn't be surprised. Don't don't be surprised if the next video don't got the the the, the elite players. Because mm -hmm. y'all gonna see some stuff in here. Y'all gonna be like, I need to be a part of it. I know that. Some of you trainers is gonna change how you train a little bit because you're gonna you're gonna see there's some good stuff in here. <laughs>